On today's episode, three things to think about in production equipment sensors. Today's episode of End of the Line is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.tv today. You know, everything today is sensor equipped. My smartphone, the family car, and every piece of production equipment on the line is designed to feed information back to people or computers for control or monitoring purposes. Now you would think that with all this technology it would make manufacturing trouble free, but we all know that that's definitely not the case. And oddly, a vast increase in the amount of actionable information from production equipment, well it doesn't necessarily result in good problem solving or decision making. Now one reason for this is what I believe is a de-emphasis on a few fundamentals, especially regarding sensors. Now if I could pick three things that I would carve into stone about sensors, they'd be these. One. Sensors rarely detect or measure the quantity that you're actually interested in. A pressure transducer, for example, may be used to measure a parameter that infers force, a quality that you are interested in. Similarly, electric current might be a proxy for heat rise, and flow rate may be an indirect way of measuring viscosity. More often than not, the parameters that a sensor measures have to be processed or converted into usable information, either inside the sensor itself or within the central monitoring platform. Now in the process, some information can be lost or disregarded either by a human operator or by a curve-fitting algorithm. Not getting the results you expect? Well, it's always a good idea to question what you're actually measuring. In my pressure for force example, hydraulic pressure may be a decent proxy for force over a known fixed surface area, but is your system frictionless? Is it perfectly rigid? Is it unaffected by temperature? There are lots of things to think about. Two, time matters. For sensors in industrial use, systems that integrate parameters over time, well, they can make a lot of sense if you're interested in mean values. But those systems can also smooth over or ignore transient events. In some cases, that's just good noise filtering, but in others, transients or noise, well, they carry useful information by themselves. We know what a voltage spike can do to integrated circuits and how a pressure transient can hammer pumps and seals. And if those things aren't immediately damaging, well, smart sensor technology may paper them over. Sometimes it makes sense to take a look at the raw signal before those DSP systems clean up the data. Now, the more sophisticated the monitoring system, the less likely a user is to look at the raw, unfiltered signal, both because of the vast amount of information the systems are aggregating and their increasing reliability. Things that don't break often are not often suspect when things go wrong, but there's no such thing as perfect reliability. And finally, three, don't be too quick to blame the sensor itself. It's easy to assume that a temperature reading that goes off scale low means a bad sensor when it might mean entrained air, cavitation, or simply low fluid level. Similarly, the little things like mechanical damage, looser corroded connectors, bad grounds, and EM interference, well, they're more likely to cause a signal dropout than the failure of a sensor itself. Now, while this is mainly an MRO problem, it never hurts for a smart engineer to ask about these factors when tracking down a spurious or misleading input. For small businesses, that might be as simple as stepping out from behind a desk. In an auto plant, it may involve a golf cart in an hour of your time. Today, it may involve a Zoom or a Teams call to a production plant halfway around the world. But before diving into thousands of lines of code, it never hurts to check for a loose wire. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.